Good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to be explaining the final assignments in junior English. So last week, you guys should have finished reading the Joy Luck Club, and you should have finished turning in the notes for part one through four, as well as the smaller assignments. Um, this week, we are starting uh, the capstone assignment. It's usually a capstone project, but I've scaled it down a bit. Um, on this calendar, you'll see that this week is only dedicated to working on the capstone. Um, and then on Friday, part one is due. So part one, when you follow the link, looks like this. Um, it's basically an assignment that asks you to think back on all of the units we've done, the literary movements and the novels we've read. And it asks you the unit question one more time, and then you apply it to that particular unit. This document that we've been adding to a little bit throughout the year, and you might have added to it during the distance learning period, is meant to get you to think back on all these units. And if you've done any part of this assignment, you want to have it open as you work this week and next week. Um, if you open it up or you pull it out of your notebook, because it could also be a hard copy and it's empty, uh, it's okay. But if you have this done, it will help you out. So for people, where that document was empty, or for anybody else, I do have a hyperlink that lists all the texts that we've read throughout the year, just to jog your memory. If you did this uh, pandemic assignment over the distance learning period, you've seen this before. And if you didn't, you can check it out now, but it's each literary movement, the text we read during it, again, rationalists, romantics, realists, um, I don't list the novels that we did, but hopefully you can remember Gatsby, Black Boy, Catcher in the Rye, uh, and then the Joy Luck Club. So back to this assignment, part one, like I said, is just a recap of the curriculum we went over throughout this year. Um, I've boiled it down so that you just need to write three sentences per letter, right? So there's four letters, A, B, C, and D, to represent four main units we did. So if you can write three sentences in each of these boxes, you are good to go. And as long as the three sentences are answering the question and show some thought. Uh, for example, B says, what did you learn from reading The Great Gatsby? How do money and social class affect one's dreams? So uh, anything from The Great Gatsby that you learned, a life lesson, a theme you could apply, something you learned from a literary point of view uh, about love triangles or narrators, anything like that. And then how do money and social class affect one's dreams? I would go back to the essay you wrote uh, at the end of the first semester and see what you said there, because likely you answered that question, um, either in the essay or in the so what section. So that was part one. And part one is going to be due Friday, May 22nd um, on Google Classroom. Once you type it in, click turn in, and you're good. Um, and Part one is straightforward, it's on the document, but you'll also see here it says work on part two. You can submit it this week or next week, and then it says I would love some early submissions because that's always good to, if I can look at some stuff early and grade it over the weekend, um, but if not, the, uh, the due date for that final part two is Wednesday, May 22nd. All right, so if part one was about the curriculum of the class, and applying the unit questions to each sort of literary movement and novel. Part two is all about you. So you're going to apply our year long question to yourself and your own life. Our question for the year was, how does a person's background and experiences contribute to who they are? So part two, I have four questions also, but again, they're geared towards your own self. So for example, if American history and literature affects American culture today, how does your personal history affect who you are today? So you see each question is um, turned on you. Um, I'm gonna be providing uh, an example. That link is coming soon. And when you complete this, this is not gonna be just a Google Doc with answers. This is gonna be some creative method of showing A, B, C, and D. Um, I have some suggestions down here. So it could be a song or a poem that deals with all these. 
you can definitely like intermix parts of questions with the other ones. It doesn't have to be like four separate parts. It can be one big thing that addresses all of the questions. Um, you would just record yourself singing the poem or you would record yourself reading it. So this is us pretending like it's a presentation, but so you, you'd send me your poem and you'd send me your audio. Um, you could do something like a poster and it could be very artistic and symbolic and you're using like these different drawn or graphically drawn symbols. And then you'd submit an audio of you explaining the parts of it and how they answer these four questions up here. Uh, there's an option you could do more of like a talk show or video format. So, or even just like a, like a YouTube video format of you just talking into the camera. Uh, maybe you have some visuals with you, some visuals on the screen. Um, and it could be anything else like a photo collage. It could be artwork you make. And again, your voice recording parts of it. And it could even be something else. I've had uh, in the past when students presented it to class, some students brought like physical artifacts from their past, from their life, and they explain each of the questions using these physical objects. So you could video yourself doing that. But the key is there has to be some sort of presentation component. So either you on a video that I can watch or you speaking um, on an audio that I can listen to. And you would put all the links to those here in this box and then submit it on Google Classroom. And then our Zoom for this week, I'm going to have sort of more of an office hour Zoom on Friday, uh, this Friday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. If anyone wants to drop in and ask some questions about part one before they submit it that night, or if they want to ask some questions about part two as they're working on it throughout the week and a little bit of the next week if needed. Um, this is not the only time you can ask questions, though. Please send me emails all week, like as things come up send an email, I'll get back to you very quickly. Um, I don't wanna leave you alone doing the project without any assistance because it is a more creative metaphorical project that does require you to kind of go outside the box and sometimes students have questions about, you know, does this still fit with the assignment? Does that still fit? So please email me throughout the whole week and I will definitely get back to you very quickly. Lastly, here's the rubric for the capstone assignment. Uh, part one is worth two points and it's pass, no pass. And then part two is also worth two points, although it's a little more detailed as far as the parts, because remember part one is just a Google doc and then part two is more of a creative project. Um, but yeah, four points total for the whole capstone, part one and part two. And so far, I haven't posted these yet, but they will be posted under the distance learning Google Classroom classwork section. So expect to see those pop up when I post this video. All right. Thank you, guys. And again, please email me throughout this process if you have any questions. These are our last assignments in English 3, and it's kind of bittersweet, but this is it. And so I want to help you guys out and make sure you turn something in that you like and that you're proud of. All right. Bye.